Hello dear students. Our lesson for today is all about vectors. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to 1. Differentiate vectors and scalar quantities. 2. Perform addition of vectors. And 3. Rewrite a vector in component form. Before we start, let us have a short review about Sokodowa. We all know that it is just an easy way to remember how sine, cosine and tangent works. For sine, it is always opposite over hypotenuse. For cosine, it is adjacent over hypotenuse. And for tangent, it is opposite over adjacent. To refresh your knowledge, let us answer this simple problem. A 30-degree triangle has a hypotenuse of length 2, an opposite side of length 1, and an adjacent side of square root of 3, as shown on the figure. Now, try solving for the functions. For sine, we get 0.5 by dividing opposite magnitude of 1 with the hypotenuse, magnitude of 2. For cosine, we get 0.866 by dividing the adjacent magnitude of square root of 3 with the hypotenuse, magnitude of 2. Lastly, for tangent, we get 0.577 by dividing the opposite magnitude of 1 with the adjacent magnitude of square root of 3. For this lesson, it is also important that we recall the law of cosines. The law of cosines is useful for finding either the third side of a triangle when we know two sides and the angle between them, or the angles of a triangle when we know all three sides. Let us now continue with our lesson. Vectors and scalars. A scalar is a quantity that is fully described by a magnitude only. It is described by just a single number. Some examples of scalar quantities include speed, volume, mass and time. On the other hand, a vector is a quantity that has both a magnitude and a direction. Vector quantities are important in the study of motion. Some examples of vector quantities include force, velocity, acceleration and momentum. The following are the parameters considered as vectors. Lift, displacement, weight, drag, force, momentum, acceleration, and velocity. For scalar, we have time, distance, mass, volume, area, density, work, temperature, speed, energy and power. Representation of vectors. A vector is usually represented by either a letter with an arrow above the letter or a bold face letter. The magnitude of a vector is represented by either a light face letter without an arrow on top or the vector symbol with vertical bars on both sides. Component of a vector. The component form of a vector is the ordered pair that describes the changes in the x and y values. We can say that two vectors are equal if they have the same magnitude and direction. Or when they are parallel if they have the same or opposite direction. We can combine vectors by adding them, the sum of two vectors is called the resultant. In this picture, the resultant is the arrow between the vectors and b. In order to add two vectors, we add the corresponding components. Example, add the two following vectors. Vector a with ordered pair 2 and 4. And vector b with ordered pair negative 1 and 6. We add the corresponding components as shown. Vector a plus vector b equals 2 plus negative 1, and 4 plus 6. The answer is 1 and 10. Adding parallel vectors. To add parallel vectors, we just need to consider the direction. We add vectors in the same direction. And subtract those who oppose each other. For the first example, the forces 1 Newton and 1.5 Newton are both directed to the right. So the F net will be 1 plus 1.5 equals to 2.5 Newtons to the right. For the second example, the forces 1 Newton and 1.5 Newton are both directed to the left, while 1.5 Newton is directed to the right. The F net will be 1.5 plus 1 minus 1.5, we get 1 Newton to the left. Non-parallel forces. To add non-parallel forces, we use two methods. Tip-to-tail method parallelogram method. Let us answer this example while illustrating how to use the two methods. Consider two forces that are not acting along the same line on an object, find the resultant force. F1 is 75 newtons, while F2 is 50 newtons. 
The angle between them is 60 degrees. Using the parallelogram method. Step 1. Redraw the given diagram using a suitable scale to represent the forces with arrows. Note, 1 cm represents 10 newtons. So 75 n equals 7.5 cm, and 50 n equals 5 cm. Step 2. Complete a parallelogram to scale. Step 3. The resultant force is represented by the diagonal of the parallelogram. Find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force to scale. Measuring the length of the yellow line, we get F net equals 10.6 times 10 equals 106 N at an angle of 25 to the power of 0 from 75 N. Tip to tail method. Step 1. Draw an arrow to represent one of the two forces using a suitable scale. Note, 1 cm represents 10 newtons. So 50 N equals 5 cm. Step 2. Where the first arrow ends, draw another arrow to represent the second force 75 N, so that the tip of the first arrow joins the tail of the second arrow. Step 3. The resultant force is found by joining the starting point of first force to the end point of second force. Find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force to scale. Measuring the resultant represented by the yellow line, F net equals 10.6 times 10 equals 106 N at an angle of 35 to the power of 0 from 50 N. You may have observed that the recent methods are graphical and you may be worried that it will consume time. However, we can calculate the resultant numerically so you have nothing to worry. For the numerical analysis, first, observe the figure on the bottom. The connected lines formed a triangle. Which means, we can use any method that we know can solve a triangle. Look closely, we are given two sides and an angle between the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. Through the given, we can conclude that we can use the law of cosines. The formulas for the law of cosines are shown in the picture. Now, using the cosine law, we can compute for the resultant, r. r squared is equals to the square of adjacent side plus the opposite side, minus the product of twice the two sides and cos of the angle opposite the hypotenuse, r, that we are looking for. Typing this in your calculators, we get 108.97. Next example, a weight of 8 newtons hangs from the end of a rope. It is pulled sideways by a horizontal force F of 5N and is held stationary. What is T? We can draw the figure using the parallelogram method and the tip-to-tail method, like what is shown in the picture below. To solve this using a numerical analysis, let us focus on figure enclosed in a red shape. Looking closely, observe that the shape formed by connecting the lines is a right triangle. Because of this, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the resultant. Just square the sides and add them, then get the square root of their sum. We get, t equals 9.4339. Unit vector. A unit vector is a vector that has a magnitude of one unit. A unit vector is also known as a direction vector. The symbol for the unit vector is usually a lower case letter with a hat, such as shown in the picture. The unit vector of a vector can be calculated using the given formula, unit vector is equals to the ratio of 1 and the magnitude of the given vector. Where the magnitude of the vector can be calculated by getting the square root of the sum of the squares of the ordered pair. Unit vectors can be used in two dimensions. Here we show that the vector A is made up of 2, X, unit vectors and 1.3, Y, unit vectors. Likewise we can use unit vectors in 3, or more, dimensions. We can add or subtract vectors algebraically using the vector components. Using the given vectors, let us try a minus C. A, C equals 4 sub X I plus 5 sub Z K, minus, 7 sub Y J minus 8 sub Z K, 
Reordering the components with the same variables, we arrive at 4 sub x minus 7 sub j plus 13 sub zk. We can compute for the magnitude of the vector and find its direction using the formulas shown. For the direction, we use, theta is equals to arc tan of b over a. Let us try computing for the magnitude and direction of vector a. As you may have observed, the magnitude is calculated just like the Pythagorean theorem. Substituting the values, we get magnitude of vector a as 6.4 units. For its direction, simply get the arc tan of 5 over 4. We get theta as 51.34. Let's try another sample problem. Three forces act on a point, 8n at 0 degrees, 9n at 90 degrees, and 10n at 217 degrees. What is the net force? First let us draw the diagram for this problem so we can easily analyze. For 8 newtons, it is at 0 degrees so we draw it like this. Then let us draw 9 newtons which is directed to 90 degrees. Third, 10 newtons is at 217 degrees. Finally, let us draw the resultant. Observe that the shaped form does not a triangle, not even a square. So we cannot use the Pythagorean theorem and the law for cosines. To solve this, let us consider the summation of the Foss's x and y components. For the summation of the Foss's x component, we write f sub x. All magnitudes directed to the right are positive, while all that is directed to the left will be negative. We write fx as equals to positive 8 plus 0, because the 9 newton force has no x component. To get fx, remember that the position of of the force 10 newtons is at 217 degrees. Now locating the x component, we draw a yellow dashed line, and a red dashed line for the y component. To be able to use, sine, we need to get the angle between the hypotenuse and the y component. Subtracting 217 from 270, we get 53. Now we can write, fx equals 10 sine 53. The summation of fx is 0.013644 newtons. For the summation of fy, we write all magnitudes directed upward as positive. Now to get Fy, we use cosine considering that the angle is between the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. For the summation of Fy, we get 2.9818. Now to get the resultant, we simply compute for the square root of the square of the summation of Fx and Fy. Our resultant, R is equals 2.9818 newtons. To determine whether our resultant's direction is right, let us compute for theta, arctan multiplied by fy over fx, we get 89.7378 degrees. For your activities, answer activity 1 on page 13, activity 2 on page 14, activity 3 on page 15, and activity 4 on page 16. That's all for today. Have a nice day.